The Minecraft 1.20, or Trails and Tales update, has finally been released. While certainly not the biggest update the game has ever seen, there are quite a few fun new features like two new wood types, pottery, and armor trims. However, not every feature is as exciting as others, so I thought it would be fun to rank every feature in the 1.20 update from the worst to the best. Now how exactly am I going to be ranking these? Because there are quite a few ways you could. For this video, I'm just going to simply go with the features I like the most, so generally the most unique, exciting, or interesting. Note that this isn't a usefulness ranking necessarily. While more useful items will likely appear near the top, there are some cases where items with similar uses in game will be separated quite a bit. So really you could think of this video as ranking these items based on how excited I am. Now we also have to cover what counts as a feature. I'm only going to cover things that pertain to survival mode, so command and background changes I'm going to mostly ignore. I'm also going to ignore bug fixes as well, I don't really care much about some random glitch being patched. I'm also going to be grouping certain items together rather than just ranking every single feature individually. So sorry if you really wanted to see how the cherry fence gate compares to the howl pottery shirt, those two items are just going to be part of larger item groups. Hopefully that's not too confusing, and I did my best to make sure that the groupings were the most logical they could be. But with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right into the worst feature. The netherite smithing template is easily the worst feature in the update. In my last video, I spent about 10 minutes going over my problem with it and how I think it should be fixed, so I'll keep this section brief. Essentially, this is now a required item to upgrade any piece of equipment to netherite. You get this item from bastions and it can be duplicated with 7 diamonds and a block of netherrack. My main problem pertains to how this item is going to be way too difficult to get on multiplayer servers due to people likely already raiding all nearby bastions. There are a few other aspects I talk about in that video, but just know that I find this to be extremely flawed. Even if it weren't flawed though, I kind of find this hard to be excited about. Wow, a thing that was already in the game is now slightly harder! Yippee! Is it a necessary change? Maybe, but definitely not one I'd consider exciting. So I think it's fair to say that this earns last place. 21, the calibrated skulk sensor and the update to amethyst blocks. I decided to group these two together because they're both used for the same purpose, to help skulk sensors be just a bit more useful. Now feel free to correct me in the comments if I get anything wrong here because I was never really huge on skulk sensors in the first place. The calibrated one will be able to detect specific sounds by giving it a certain level of a redstone signal. So for example, if you wanted to detect walking noises, you would input a signal strength of one. Every other sound you tried to do will not activate it, only the one you've set it to pick up. You could technically do stuff like this before using comparators though, so this feature is once again another one that's sort of difficult to be excited about. Sure, it makes redstone using skulk and sounds a bit easier, but outside of that, it's kind of pointless. I also decided to group in the amethyst block change here as well, which allows it to re-emit sounds from skulk sensors to other skulk sensors nearby. I'm sure that's probably somewhat useful, but I haven't explored skulk redstone much myself, so it's hard to really grasp how big or small of a change this is. Since skulk is a niche set of items anyway, I can't imagine these new things are topping anyone's list. They're better than the netherite template though, since they are somewhat adding something new, but it's just not that much in comparison into the other features. 20, the pitcher flower, and 19, the torch flower. These are currently the two flowers you can get from the sniffer, which is number 18, by the way. Essentially, you find the sniffer egg within suspicious sand, and once it hatches, it'll be able to sniff around dirt and give you either torch flower seeds or pitcher pods. It has an eight minute cooldown between every item, and you can't get the seeds from the flower itself, meaning that every one of these flowers that you may want will have to come from the sniffer. I personally find that to be a bit tedious, but it's not like these are my favorite flowers anyway. I'm not a huge fan of how the pitcher flower looks at all, to be honest. It's just a bit too strange for me. The torch flower looks pretty neat, but I think in most cases, I would just use an orange tulip. And no, despite what some may think, the torch flower does not produce light. It doesn't in real life either, so it's technically realistic, but I think a feature like that would have actually made this a much better item. Both flowers can be used to get dye as well, with the pitcher pod giving you cyan and the torch flower giving you orange. So if you're ever looking for the most inefficient cyan and orange dye farm possible, these two flowers are your best bet. The sniffer gets to place above both of its flowers for one simple reason. It's funny. The design on this guy is fun, and while I feel like he doesn't really belong with the other Minecraft mobs due to how he's animated and designed, that kind of works in this case since he's supposed to be an ancient dinosaur thing. Really the only thing holding him back is that he's not very useful at all. I'm genuinely surprised there are only two items he can sniff up. Maybe letting him sniff up some pottery shards rarely could be a cool inclusion. I mean, they literally have a shard based off of this guy. If they could give his sniffing ability a bit more uses, then this could definitely be a much better mob in the future. 17. Trail Ruins This is the last feature that I would consider somewhat to disappointing. This is meant to showcase the brand new archaeology features being an underground structure that you have to carefully excavate to get items from the suspicious gravel inside. The only thing is, I just don't find these very fun to dig through. It takes a ton of time because you don't want to accidentally shatter a piece of suspicious gravel. What's inside that gravel though is also somewhat of a problem. Yes, there are a ton of exclusive items, as the trail ruins are the only places you can get the burn, danger, friend, heart, heartbreak, howl, and sheaf pottery shards, the host, razor, shaper, and wayfinder armor trims, and the relic music disc. Those are great and all, but 
man, the time it takes to get them is obnoxious. The bigger problem though is that these aren't the only items you can get, as there are a ton of other fantastic things like purple stained glass panes or light blue dye. These other items are just super annoying and makes the whole process feel super tedious. I guess that's sort of the point as it's meant to be archaeology, but I just have almost no reason to go here. I mean, yeah, some of the trims and shirts look really good, but considering there are so many other things you could get, I wouldn't be surprised if it sometimes takes several trail ruins to finally get the item you want. I also have to say that finding trail ruins can somewhat be annoying. I mean, seriously, it can sometimes be just one block of terracotta sticking up from the ground. I'm not really sure what they could do to fix this structure, though, or if it really needs to be fixed at all. I'm just personally not very excited for it. I'll probably just explore one or two of these and never touch them again, unless I really need the heartbreak shirt or something. 16, the camel. Now we're onto the features that I don't really have any complaints about. The camel is our second and final mob for this update. They'll spawn in deserts, of course, and can be ridden. They actually have the special property of letting two people ride them at once, which can be good for travel and multiplayer, and you can even put the camel in a minecart to basically give it two seats. Now, do I see myself riding these guys very often? No, not really. I mean, I'm the guy that said horses are basically useless, so why do I like these guys? They're funny. Yeah, what I haven't mentioned yet is that the camel can actually long jump like Mario. I remember to say Mario this video! This long jump is one of my favorite animations in the entire game. It makes me laugh every time I do it. If I did have a criticism, I guess I'd make these guys drop leather instead of nothing. But otherwise, this is a pretty good implementation. 15. Relic. First off, I am so happy they're basically giving us a record disc for every update now. I think they're great to include and they've been able to release some bangers. Pigstep and Other Side are my two favorite songs in the entire soundtrack, so I more than welcome more music discs. But how does Relic stand amongst the others? Well, it's certainly no Pigstep or Other Side, but it's pretty good. I'd probably put it in the middle of a hypothetical music disc ranking. It's a song I might listen to every now and again, but it's not quite on the level as the really good discs. I'm so happy they added it though, so it definitely belongs here. For reference, Pigstep and Other Side would have placed much higher, so the song quality was the main determining factor in this ranking. 14. Pink Petals. These are tiny plants that can be found in the Cherry Grove biome, which we'll get to later. They work like sea pickles where you can place them on the same block four times to get the number you want. In the context of the biome, these add so much color to it. I love how they look here, and I think they'll work great in other builds as well, even if they don't use cherry wood. I'm certainly looking forward to trying to build something with these. Luckily, these are also easily farmable, as all you have to do is bone meal it and it'll grow more. Oh, and it could also be used to make pink dye, which is just a nice little bonus. 13. The Wool Color Change. This isn't a huge new feature by any means, but it's one that will be super helpful. If you didn't know, you could previously only dye white wool different colors. If you wanted to turn a piece of black wool into a piece of red wool, you sadly wouldn't be able to. That's luckily been reverted in this update, so now if you have a ton of spare wool of the wrong color, you don't have to worry about it being a waste. This also goes for both carpets and beds as well. Yes, this change is pretty small, but it's a quality of life change that I greatly appreciate. 12. Sign Changes <laughs> Now this isn't the new hanging signs, we'll get to those later, this is actually about the changes to the original sign that also happened to apply to the hanging sign. Now you can not only edit signs, but the signs can also be double-sided. These are really cool and helpful features. The editing sign thing was a long time coming, but I honestly wasn't expecting the double-sided signs. The double-sided feature will definitely come most in handy with the new hanging sign, so I'm really happy they decided to make this change now. I should also note that you can click on a sign with a honeycomb to stop it from being edited. I mean, you could just not edit the sign. Again, this is another small feature, but one that I think will greatly improve the game. 11, the piglin head. I've said numerous times by now that I think Mojang should really add more mob heads into the game. They're some of the best looking decoration blocks and the fact that before this update, only five mobs had placeable heads was super lame. While this isn't huge, getting one brand new head at all is fantastic. The piglin, being the main face of the nether, makes sense to get the next head. I also like how challenging this is to get since you have to bring a charged creeper into the nether. The head is modeled to fit the piglin as well, which is nice since it allows for the head to be animated a bit with its ears. If you give it a redstone signal or just walk with it on, the ears will move which I think is pretty cute. I really hope they keep on adding in more mob heads. I always play with the more mob heads data pack from Vanilla Tweaks because I love them so much, so making them actual features would be great. It would be especially good because of our next feature, 10 note block mob sounds. Now, when you place a mob head on a note block, the sound played will be from the given mob. Take a listen. This is such a fun feature idea, and also perfect for a major amount of trolling. I am so sorry for any of you that get a dragon head note block looped under your house. 
but also that's really funny. Nine, the chiseled bookshelf. Now this may be quite high for some of you, but to be honest, it was originally gonna be even higher. This item's main use is to hold books. These can be normal books, written books, or enchanted books. When you put them in, they'll fill up one of the bookshelf's six slots. First off, I like the customization here. It will be nice to finally have a way to adjust the number of books per block. Yeah, I know you could use looms before, but this block is definitely better. This also has some fun redstone functionality with comparators, so you can make secret entrances using books as a lever of sorts. The main reason I put these up so highly though, actually has to do with the block's design. The sides and top of the block have an incredibly unique design that I absolutely love. Throughout this video, you'll see a lot of my flooring was actually made out of this block. Yeah, it's kind of expensive to make a whole floor or wall out of them, but I think it's worth it. Overall, this is definitely a feature that exceeded my expectations. Would it be nice if the different books had different designs? Yeah, but I'll take what we got. This is still pretty good. 8. The Brush This is made by using a stick, feather, and copper ingot. So right off the bat, I love that copper is getting a new use. But what is the brush for? Let's to get items from 7, Suspicious Sand and Gravel. These are the items that make up the archaeology system, and it can be fun to check these blocks for rare items. Sure, the trail ruins are somewhat mediocre in my opinion, but those aren't the only structures that these can be found in. Included at this number 7 spot, I'm throwing in the sus updates to four of the game's structures. Those four are the Desert Temple, Desert Well, and the two types of ocean ruins. Inside of each, they will now generate suspicious blocks, and each structure's blocks have a different loot table. The least interesting of them is probably the cold ocean ruin, but the other three all have something I want to talk about. First off, the warm ocean gives you the sniffer egg, being the only place to do so. While the sniffer is still underwhelming like I said, it's nice that this structure has an exclusive drop. Desert wells, after being useless for a decade now, are finally given a use through these suspicious blocks. While they generate the least amount out of any structure, generating them at all makes this actually useful. But the structure that easily got the biggest change was the desert temple. Now you'll be able to notice that some of the sandstone in the floor is just normal sand. Digging that out leads you to a whole new room inside the temple filled with suspicious blocks. I remember discovering this for myself before watching any videos on the snapshots and I thought this was super cool. So so yeah, the implementation of these blocks and pre-existing structures is really great, but what did they actually give you? Well, I think now it's time we take a look at our next entry, 6, the decorated pots and pottery sherds. Now, when the update was being developed, I was honestly not too big on this feature. I thought it would be kind of boring and not worth seeking out, but as they added more designs, I really like how this set of items turned out. Basically, within suspicious blocks, you can find sherds, which can be one of 20 different designs. These can be pretty helpful for decorating. I've been using them in the background in a lot of this video, in fact. They hold lanterns really well and can even look like they're holding up fences. You can also combine different sherds together or just have a plain side using a brick. The customization is through the roof on this item, and I'm really looking forward to seeking them out. Yeah, it does suck there's no way to make them yourself, so you could end up having a difficult time making the pot you want, but I like the archaeology system enough to let it slide for now. However, with so many different designs, some are bound to be worse than others. So I think it's time for a mini ranking of all the pottery sherds. This is purely based on aesthetics, so let's just jump right in. 20. Sheaf This can be found in trail ruins, and I honestly could not tell you what is pictured. Looks like someone threw up on the canvas or something. I mean, I know based on the name it's a sheaf, but I could not tell you just from looking at it. 19. Friend. This is also found in the trail ruins, and I similarly could not tell you what this is meant to be. Probably because you don't have any friends. I found out it's supposed to be a villager while editing. 18. Explorer. This is found in the cold ocean and is supposed to be a map, but I don't think the design works very well on a pot. 17. Shelter. Found in the warm ocean this time, this has what looks like an acacia tree on it. That's my least favorite tree type, but at least I can tell what it's actually supposed to be. 16. Mourner. This is found in cold oceans and I think is supposed to be the warden. I don't feel like the design translates perfectly to the pot, but it's neat enough. 15 Snort. This is our sniffer design, and just like the mob, it's found in warm oceans. This is just a bit too specific for me to use, but I think it looks cute. 14 Plenty. This is found in cold oceans, and I think the chest is just a little bit too big for it to work on the pot. 13 Danger. This is when the designs start getting pretty good. The creeper design is cute, though still quite specific. Oh, and this is found in trail ruins. 12 Howl. Also found in trail ruins, this is just a bit cuter than the creeper one. I mean, it's a dog, what else could you want? 11 Minor. This is our first from the desert temple, and it's a nice and simple design. Same goes for 10 Blade though it's found in the cold ocean. 9. Archer. This can be found in desert temples, and I just like how the bow looks on the pot. 8. Angler. This is found in warm oceans, and of these last few tool ones, I like it the best. 7. Arms up. This is our first desert well shirt, and it can work fairly well in a number of different settings. 6. Skull. This is found in desert temples, and you can't really go wrong with a skull. 5. Burn. This is found in trail ruins and has a fantastic design. I really love how this looks. Now I can finally fire react in Minecraft without burning my friend's house down. 4. Heart. This works really well on a pot, but 3. Heartbreak is just a bit funnier. Both can be found in trail ruins. 2. Brewer. This is the other desert well shirt, and I just think the potion looks really great on the pot. Definitely going
going to be putting this in any potion area I build in the future. But easily my favorite is one, prize. This design is just perfect and I could definitely see myself using this a ton. It's found in desert temples and I'm really looking forward to raiding a ton of them. Hope we all enjoy this mini shirt ranking. Here's the averages for each structure's shirds. I don't really feel like reading them out though, so let's get back to the real ranking. Five, bamboo wood. I'm always a big fan of new wood types and this is of course no exception. In many ways, this might just be the single most unique of the bunch. Its texture is wildly different from any other wood and it comes from bamboo rather than a tree. It even lets you use a mosaic variant, which is pretty cool. While the color is somewhat close to birch, the texture work definitely makes this unique enough to be worth adding. I also really like how they decided to make the boat for this wood a raft. That's a small change, but one that I really like as it helps it stand out. I haven't really done anything with this block myself yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it out more in the future. Four, hanging signs. While on the surface, this may not really be bigger than our last few entries, this is the feature I predict myself using the most. It's simple but extremely applicable to almost any build. The way they implemented this too is near perfection. First off, they got sign variants for every wood type, which is a given, but it's worth pointing out. Secondly, I also received the changes the normal sign did, so we could have it be double-sided if we want to. But a big thing I like that they didn't need to do is that there are actually three minor variations for each wood type. There's a double chain, a pointed chain, and a sign with a bar. These minor variations were completely unnecessary necessary for them to add, but I'm so happy they did so we can make our builds with them as perfect as possible. The bar variants can be placed on the sides of blocks instead of ceilings, which adds even more possibilities. Honestly, the only thing I don't like about these are the crafting recipes. I mean, did it really need to use strip logs? But yeah, other than that, this is fantastic. 3. The Cherry Grove Biome, and 2. Cherry Wood. This is one of my favorite looking biomes and wood types in the entire game. First, let's start with the biome. While it's almost always very small, it looks incredible. The pink petals all over the floor, the cherry trees, and the particles flying around all go to making this one of the best looking biomes Minecraft has ever released. With the biome though, of course comes the main attraction, the brand new Cherry Wood. Unlike the bamboo, this is a wildly different color from anything we've seen, being a bright pink. This opens up a ton of new possibilities for brighter builds that I'm really looking forward to. The dark logs also provide for a nice contrast to the wood type, it can make for some pretty great builds themselves. But what I think I might just use the most out of this family of blocks is the sapling. This is by far the best looking sapling in the game. I will for sure be filling up nearly every flower pot I place from now on with this block. It works so perfectly for a decorative item that I might even say it's better than the wood itself. Everything about both this biome and the wood type was done perfectly, so I think it's fair to say that this is one of the best features in the update. But for my favorite feature, I just have to go with the armor trims. This is a feature that I never saw Mojang adding in a billion years. When I first saw people post about this, I legitimately thought it was a mod at first. This is just so unlike anything else they've done, and I love it. With the new armor templates, you can add designs to your armor. The color of the designs is based on what material you use, adding in even more customization possibilities. This is going to be such a fun way to add personality to your look, as once you get armor, a lot of your skin gets covered up. The way you get these is by finding them in the game's many structures. This this was a genius way of going about it as it more than anything else in this update is making me extremely excited to go exploring. It's been added to a large majority of the game's bigger structures, making them much more worth traveling to, which was a problem that I felt Minecraft needed to deal with. Speaking of, these also solve another problem Minecraft has been having, the fact that diamonds have been losing a lot of usefulness. Now you can use 7 diamonds and a block based on the template to duplicate the trim. I honestly think this feature was implemented pretty much perfectly. There's a good variety of trims, each trim can be different colors, and with the trims, I'm more excited to explore the Minecraft world than I ever have been before. But just like the pottery shirts, the trims all look different. So to end us off here, we got ourselves another mini ranking. The trims are much more similar to each other than the shirts though, so I'm not really going to say much of anything on why I like one more than another. 16. Rib. This is gotten from the Nether Fortress, and I like this one the least because it mutes the color of the trim for some reason. It's certainly unique, but I just like the brighter colors. 15. Shaper, which is found in Trail Ruins. 14. Razor, which is also found in Trail Ruins. 13. Wayfinder, which is our third Trail Ruin trim in a row. 12. Eye, which is found in Strongholds. 11. Snout, which is found in Bastions. 10. Wild, which is found in Jungle Temples. 9. Sentry, which is found in Pillager Outposts. 8. Ward, which is found in Ancient Cities. 7. Dune, which is found in Desert Temples. 6. Host, which is found in Trail Ruins. 5. Spire, which are found in End Cities. 4. Tide, which are found in Ocean Monuments. 3. Coast, which are found in Shipwrecks. 2. Vex, which are found in Wooden Mansions. And finally, easily the best one, is Silence, which is found in Ancient Cities. I like it the best for the simple reason that it covers a majority of the armor with the trim. It looks really good, and I'm super excited to get my hands on it.
but it only spawns in 1% of ancient city chests. Mojang, why? But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you mad that I didn't mention grass blocking enchantment tables from bookshelves has been patched? Let me know in the comments. Overall, this update is pretty solid. I definitely like it more than 1.19, though it's lower on my list compared to 1.18, 17, and 16. I hope the next update has a bit more features because this feels a bit lacking in the amount. The content actually added here for the most part is great. I just think they could use a bit more next time. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.